Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of installing and configuring SharkBite. I decided to base my install on the Happy Model Mobula 7 to see if I could fit a digital FPV system into a drone this small. So I'll be starting from that for this guide, but these same steps should apply no matter what drone you're using. I think this process shouldn't change much in the future, but if anything does change that you need to know about, I'll put it in the description below. If you don't have SharkBite right now, I think you'll still find this video interesting. It'll at least give you an idea of what the process is and whether it's something you might want to do in the future. And I will have some flight footage of this setup at the end of the video so you can see how it flies and what it looks like. Throughout this process, we'll be setting up the receiver, updating firmware on the SharkBite gear as well as on the drone, doing the physical installation and configuring settings on the drone. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. To start, we'll take a look at the receiver. The first step is going to be installing the receiver onto your goggles. If you're using slimline goggles from Fat Shark, Skyzone, or something similar, you can probably use the included bracket to mount the receiver onto the goggles. In my case, I wanted to use SharkBite on my Skyzone Cobra X, so I ended up 3D printing a bracket to secure the receiver to the goggles. If you're also using the Cobra X and want the file to print this, just let me know in the comments and I can get that to you. Once you have the receiver mounted, you just need to plug in the power and video. For power, you can either use the included XT60 cable to power it from up to a 4S battery, or if you prefer, you can use the other cable to connect it to the balance plug on a 2S Fat Shark battery pack. I chose to use that. Video is simple as well. There's an included mini HDMI cable and you just need to plug it into the receiver and your goggles. Oh, and don't forget to put antennas on the receiver. It has two patch antennas built in and I'd recommend putting two right-hand circular polarized omni antennas on the external connectors. One really important thing to keep in mind is that you should ideally use the exact same antennas for this. After everything's plugged in, you should be able to power on your goggles, select the HDMI input, and see the display from the receiver. You can switch between the auto search mode and menu by holding the selector button to the left for about three seconds. Once you can see the menu, the receiver is ready to go. Next, I'd suggest updating the firmware on the receiver and VTXs. You'll see that this is easier to do before you have the VTX installed on the drone, so we're gonna go ahead and do it right now. SharkBite is under active development and new firmware is coming out all the time, so you definitely wanna update to the latest firmware. I'm gonna include a link in the description of this video to download that firmware, so go ahead and get those files. To update the firmware, you'll need a micro SD card. Go ahead and unzip the receiver firmware and place the files directly in the root directory of that card. With the receiver powered off, insert the micro SD card and then power it up. If you look at the screen in your goggles, you'll see a progress bar showing the firmware update process. It will take a few minutes and once it's complete, the update's done. To update the firmware in the VTX, you'll need to plug the VTX into the receiver. This is why I suggested you do this before installing anything on a drone because it's easier to connect the VTX before you have it buried inside the drone. The SharkBite receiver includes a cable for this purpose, and you can use the cable to connect the VTX to a special port on the bottom of the receiver. You'll need to use a different firmware file for the VTX, so just like you did for the receiver, put the micro SD card in your computer and place the VTX firmware files in the root directory of that card. Then, you insert the card into the receiver and power it up to update the firmware. You don't need to power the VTX to do this, and you'll be able to see on the goggle screen once the firmware update is complete. If you're installing multiple SharkBite VTXs, make sure you do this for all of them. With that out of the way, let's move on to the drone itself. Before you do anything, make sure the drone you're wanting to use is at least 2S because the SharkBite video transmitter won't work on 1S. I chose the Mobula 7 because it is 2S and it had enough excess power that I wasn't too worried about the extra weight of the SharkBite system. Before you take the drone apart, you'll probably need to update the version of Betaflight on the drone. SharkBite requires at least Betaflight 4.1, and I ended up updating mine to Betaflight 4.2.9 to get some of the latest OSD features. One thing to be aware of in the update process is that you can lose some of your PID tuning settings, so you may need to adjust that a bit after the update. My Mobula 7 was on Betaflight 4.0.6, so I did a CLI dump to save all of my settings, Flash 4.2.9 onto it, and then restored the CLI settings. I'm not gonna cover that process in detail here, but there are plenty of guides on YouTube about it if you need help. 
While you have the drone connected to the computer, go ahead and click the port tab in Betaflight to figure out which UARTs you're currently using on the flight controller. You're going to need a free one for SharkBite, so this will help you know where to solder to for the next step. Once you've figured that out, you can disconnect the drone from the computer and move on to the physical installation. After you get the drone disassembled, you'll want to start by finding the existing camera and disconnecting it. You'll also want to disconnect any external VTX that your drone may already have. In my case, this Mobula 7 had an all-in-one camera, so I desoldered all of the wires for it and completely removed it from the drone. Next, it's a good idea to figure out how you're going to mount the new SharkBite camera. I actually ended up using a Mobula 6 canopy for mine because it seemed like it was going to fit a little better, but I think I could have modified the Mobula 7 canopy to work too. Go ahead and screw the camera into the canopy and make sure it's mounted securely before you continue. Similarly, you'll want to figure out where you can fit the SharkBite VTX physically into your drone. In my case, it was simple because I was just stacking the VTX on top of the flight controller, but you may need to figure something else out depending on what drone you're using. This will also help you figure out how long you'll need to make the wires when you solder the VTX to the flight controller. Once you've figured that out, you'll need to solder the four connections on the VTX to the flight controller. The power and ground are fairly straightforward. The VTX requires 7 to 26 volts of input power, which is 2 to 6S. They do recommend soldering a capacitor onto the power input to prevent voltage spikes, but I chose not to do that because I'm only using 2S and my drone actually already had a small capacitor attached to the battery connector. It's up to you if you want to do it. I chose not to add it, but feel free to put it on if you want to. One other note that I want to mention is that on my drone, I didn't have much clearance between the edge of the VTX and the propeller ducts. To keep the wires from interfering with the props on my drone, I ended up poking the wires up through the pinholes in the VTX and soldering them so that they pointed straight down. I'd recommend doing this if you're installing it on a similar drone to mine. I soldered the power and ground connections on the VTX straight to the power input on my flight controller, so that was pretty easy. Next, you'll need to attach the TX and RX connections on the VTX to a free UART on your flight controller. This is why I suggested that you check the ports tab earlier so that you can know which UART is free for use. Once you know that, you can look up a diagram of your flight controller online and find where those pads are on the board. I'm highlighting here where the pads for my UART were located. Once you've found those pads, you can solder the TX and RX of the VTX to those pads. Make sure you connect the TX pin on the VTX to the RX pad on the flight controller and the TX pad on the flight controller to the RX pad on the VTX. After that's done, you can start reassembling the drone. Make sure you connect the MIPI cable between the camera and VTX. You'll want to be gentle with it, but it should snap into place on both sides. The VTX also has a UFL connector for an antenna, so make sure you attach an antenna there as you reassemble the drone. Once you have everything back together, just make sure none of the wires are sticking out and that everything feels secure. You might want to use a smoke stopper when you first power up the drone to make sure that you connected everything properly, but you should be done with the physical installation at this point. It's definitely the hardest part of this process, so you're almost ready to go. The last thing you need to do before you can fly is configure Betaflight to communicate with the SharkBite VTX. All of this information is in the SharkBite manual, but I'll show you how to do it here too. You'll want to start by connecting the drone to your computer and opening up Betaflight. Once you have that open, go to the Ports tab and enable MSP for the UART you've connected the VTX to. Make sure the baud rate is set to 115-200 and click the Save button at the bottom. Next, go over to the CLI tab and enter each of these two commands you see on the screen. For that second command, the number you use at the end will be the UART number minus 1. So if you connected to UART2, put a 1 in that command. Then type save, and this will apply those settings. These commands basically tell Betaflight where to send the OSD information that you'll see on the screen when you fly. This should be all you need to do, so if you power up the drone and power up the receiver, you should see the receiver auto search for channels and find the one your VTX is transmitting on. Everything should be ready to go, so you're pretty much ready to fly at this point. But I want to cover one more thing, which is how to adjust the camera and VTX settings. It's pretty easy because you can do this with your transmitter. To get into the camera settings menu, you just need to hold the left stick all the way to the right as if you're yawing all the way to the right. That'll put you into the settings menu and you can adjust all of the camera parameters there. 
In my case, I had actually installed my camera upside down, so I needed to use one of the options here to flip the camera image 180 degrees. There are a lot of other settings here that affect the image quality, and I might do a video on all of them at some point. The other thing you need to know is how to adjust the VTX settings. This is just like the Betaflight menus of Smart Audio, so you can use it to change the channel and power output and enable settings such as pit mode. You enter into the menu in a different way though. What's really important about this is that you have to do it within a few seconds of powering the drone on. When I first tried it, I thought it wasn't working properly, but it turned out I wasn't doing it fast enough. So to enter into the VTX menu, power the drone up, and immediately hold both transmitter sticks down and to the inside like you see here. That'll get you into the menu, and then you can use the sticks to navigate through it and change the settings. Pretty easy. So that's really all there is to it. If you follow these steps, you should have a working drone with SharkBite and know how to change the basic settings. I'm really happy with this build so far. The image quality is a huge step up from analog, and I was surprised at how well it flies even with the extra weight. I'll show you a bit of flight footage so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to be doing a full review of SharkBite in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or thoughts on this process, leave a comment below and we can all help each other get things set up and working. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.